I welcome you to this Maundy Thursday service of 2022. We listen to the hymn, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is Maundy Thursday, and we commemorate the institution of the Sacrament of Holy Communion and Jesus giving us the new commandment to love one another. These six words, do this in remembrance of me, have changed the world. What began 2,000 years ago at the Last Supper 
in an upper room continues year and now and at altars around the world. Gregory Dix, an Anglican monk of the last century, wrote so vividly, Was ever a command so obeyed for century after century, spreading slowly to every continent and country and among every race on the earth? This action has been done in every conceivable circumstance for every human need from infancy and to old age, from the pinnacles of human greatness to the refugees in the caves and the dens of the earth. Was ever a command so obeyed? Never. And so it is with faith and joy that we come and gather around this holy altar, priests and people, God and lovers of God, the poor, the marginalized, the great and the weak, the wealthy and the sick, the addicted and the unsure. We come to obey his command and be fed by the life-giving sacraments. Dominic Tang was a Chinese archbishop who was imprisoned for 21 years because of his loyalty to Jesus Christ and his church. After five years of solitary confinement in a dark, damp cell, the prison warden told him that he could come out and do whatever he wanted for a few hours. What do you think he did? Go for a walk? Watch TV? Call or write to his family? No. All that Archbishop Dominic Tang wanted to do was to celebrate the Holy Mass. He said, That night, when the other prisoners were asleep, lying on the floor of my cell, I celebrated Holy Mass with tears of joy. The altar was my blanket and the prison clothes my vestment. That night, I saw Jesus face to face. We celebrate the Last Supper, the most fundamental aspect of our Christian faith. This holy meal that reminds us of the sacrifice Jesus made on the cross at Calvary. During the Middle Ages, only the priests could receive Holy Communion. The congregation just saw the host, which is the bread, being raised during the prayer of consecration, and yet they felt that Jesus was present with them. Today we not only see the bread offered for us, but we also walk forward to accept it, eat it, and are transformed into it. Receiving Christ's body and blood reconnects us instantly with the meaning of our lives, with the carpenter whose journey through death gives us eternal life. And when we join the angel's song, Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, we are connected with all those who have gone before us. In the sacrament, we are offered the love of God. It is the love that looked down at us from the cross, that looks down at us now, at our worst moment, and still says, I love you and offer you my love. It is the love that overcomes death and finds in the midst of the greatest tragedy, hope and the resurrection life. What Jesus offered us at the Last Supper, his body and blood, is his greatest tangible gift to the world. Listen to these words which come from the Methodist service book, often used as an invitation to Holy Communion. Come to the sacred table, not because you must, but because you may. Come not to declare that you are righteous, but that you desire to be true disciples 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Not because you have any claim on heaven's rewards, but because in your frailty and sin, you stand in constant need of heaven's mercy and help. And therefore we come to the altar in reverence, thanksgiving, humility and awe. After supper, Jesus washed the feet of his disciples. This was an act of love, the same kind of sacrificial love that led Jesus to the cross. There is no account in either Jewish, Greek or Roman history of a superior person washing the feet of an inferior person. And this was the Son of God on his knees washing the dirt from the feet of his disciples. It was such a shock that Peter at first refused to let Jesus wash his feet. But that was precisely what Jesus came to do. Jesus said that the greatest among them was the servant of all. That is the only criteria to measure the quality of our life together. This is the benchmark by which we measure the integrity of our common life, where charity and love are, there is God. Today we remember that Jesus served, he fed, he knelt, and he washed the feet of his disciples. We know that the Eucharist is not merely something that we take, something to which we are entitled but rather that it is a gift we are given. I end with the prayer of St. Thomas Aquinas. Abide with us now, Lord. Heal us and strengthen us and sanctify us and make us more and more like your divine self. Amen. We listen to the hymn, Bread of Heaven, on Thee we feed. our spiritual communion as we pray. Jesus, may all that is in you flow into me. May your body and blood be my food and drink. May your passion and death be my strength and life. Jesus, with you by my side, enough has been given. May the shelter I seek be the shadow of your cross. Let me not run from the love which you offer but hold me safe from the forces of evil. On each of my dyings, shed your light and your love. Keep calling to me until the day comes when with your saints I may praise you forever. Amen. The blessing, the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
be among you and remain with you always. Amen. The Dismissal Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. We listen to our closing hymn, The Servant King. From heaven you came, helpless babe Entered our world, your glory there Not to be served, but to serve Sir